Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the BRICS PLCs monitoring and testing the program. And the program that we're going to be testing is the one we did last time with the start stop jog circuit. Now what we'll do is take a look at our screen up here and I'm online currently to our controller and we'll just call up our controller there in a minute. What we'll do is move the project browser from this side of the page and we can move it over to a different section. We can move the top, we can go to the bottom, we can go anywhere and around the middle. But I'm going to move it to the right hand side. And we can expand that out a little bit more like this. So you can reposition that project browser everywhere you want. Now we'll just call up our PLC and you can see that we are online. We have a run mode. Um, and we are connected through our USB connector located right there. So we're all set to go. And last time we, we really created this program, but we never had a chance to actually test it in our PLC at all. So today what we're going to do is look at a different couple of ways of looking at the data in the PLC while we're connected and online. And the first thing we want to do is we want to call up our status. And our status here has a bunch of symbols. We have status and status all and no status. No status just turns everything off. All status will look at everything on your, your screen that you're looking at and update that status. And then our status is just for our ladder itself. So if we click on status, what you will see um, is once we're here, click on the status and you'll see that your um, our work bit here uh, Y15 that are normally closed you can see it highlighted so that means that it is a true condition. We can also do all status and what you'll notice on the right hand side my project browser I have my main highlighted that means that that's that's actually active right now and it's scanning that program. So that's what status is. We can also call up status by looking at the debug menu on our main menu here and you can see that we have the same conditions here and status we also have a, a quick key uh, it's control shift s okay now the next thing we can do is we can force and change the io status in order for us to see what's happening within the controller and a difference between a force and a change is a change value will only change the value for one scan um, which may not be enough for the PLC to function. A force value means no matter what the actual uh, condition says, either by the program or by the physical I.O. coming in, it's always going to be that value. So let's look at, uh, we have a couple of menus here. We have forces and we have configure. So the um, easiest one to do is a force. And what we're going to do is we're going to force the stop here because that has to go through our, our normally closed stop and right now we have a normally open coming in. So let's force that on. So what you do is go highlight the, the stop, we right click and then we go to force element. And when we have force element it comes up with a menu and what we're going to do is force it on. So we'll hit OK. What you'll notice now my symbol here of my stop is now on and it's in red indicating that we have a force. You'll also notice that on the PLC itself, we actually have a uh, an orange light now um, under the run that actually indicates that we actually do have forces in our controller. So it will indicate right on the CPU. Now, once we have our run light there, now the next thing we have to do is hit the start. So we'll force in our start. force. We'll turn that on and when we do you'll notice that now my first output here turns on. So we've created our circuit and we can unforce by uh, right clicking again and hitting the unforce element. And we'll say start which is correct so we'll say OK. It unforces that element. You'll notice that my CPU still indicates that we do have a force um, simply because we still have the stop that's forced. So you can see my uh, seal in contact here is working and everything in the output stays on. I can then force my jog 
And when that jog comes on, again, the output still stays on. And when my jog uh, becomes, oh, let me force it off, sorry. We'll force that back on. Make sure that on is on. There we go, we force that jog on. And now what we can do is we can force, and the output stays on, you can see that. As soon as I force that jog off. Now, unforce means you're gonna remove the force. We're gonna force it off. I'm gonna leave that off condition there. We'll say okay. So now my output actually turns off. Next what we'll do is we'll take a look at our forces menu itself. So my forces menu, if I look at it, you'll see that I have currently now two forces in the program and active. We know that because we have the stop and we have the jog. And what we can do is we can um, uh, delete all the forces. So we're going to delete all. And it'll ask me, do you want to delete all of them? We'll say yes. And what we'll then do is accept this. And then what we'll do is update the PLC's force table. And what that will do is automatically remove all the forces in our program. So we're back to exactly where we started from. You'll also notice that my run light now has gone back to a green, indicating that we do no, do no longer have forces in our program itself. So the next thing we want to do is we want to look at some monitoring of our data here. And if we monitor our data, if we um, highlight the rungs we want, and the easiest way to do this, we're going to use a data view. So we highlight the rungs and we right click again and we go down to monitor values. And then we will say um, from rung contacts and coils to data view. So hit that and automatically um, what, what pops up is our elements in our data view here. So if we hit the E for edit, we can see our edits here that we can then trigger. So another quick way of looking at exactly what uh, we have in our PLC. Um, so just to see that it's working, we also can right click on say the start here and that what we'll do is just force that back on again okay. and you can see that our start is actually on and you can see that right up here All right and so we can monitor our data there we can also change our data um, so we can turn other data on Yes, we can turn that on. Now, this will turn it on for one scan, so it's actually changing the value as opposed to forcing that actual element that we have. Okay. So if we want to save that data information, what we can do is right click on here, and we go down, um, we go down to the save as, and then we can save that as a data one uh, data view element. Okay. And we can just say save. All right. So a good opportunity is to view the data. We can save what parameters we're looking at. You'll also notice that we can force and we can change data within the controller so that we can test and prove out our program before we actually put it into the field. That's it for now. And all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. If you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help, out, help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have on YouTube. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.